he was so into the music and he wanted to spread his doctrine of, yeah. of jazz. He wanted everybody to know about jazz and then not only that but what was good jazz and what was, what was not any good. Now he never had any poor jazz on his box. He couldn't stand, for example, it took me a lot of years and I just broke through about two years ago to accept Charlie Parker with strings. Why? Because Ed Slaughter told me when I was about 16 years old that it was a shame and a crime that they put Charlie Parker with strings and it should never have happened and he wouldn't let it on his jukebox. Therefore, I went 40, 50 years refusing to listen to Charlie Parker with strings. Uh, Ed ran a, a tight pool hall, even with all the characters, and Ben Johnson's here, and he could very well chip in on this uh, discussion because uh, of the characters, and they had street names. Yeah. You could know somebody for 25, 30 years and never know the righteous name because we knew them as Foots. He had the boots. Now tell, tell me about some of them. Tell us about some of those characters that... Uh, Nick, what, what, what I think about is a lot of days I go up to 23rd Northwest and, and drive through that area. That's the way Williams used to be, man. When it was two-way, man, the streets was full and people walking and hey, showing off and profiling. So we came out of that area, you know, where you had to be pretty at all times. You know? <laughs> But there were some hip cats on the streets. You learned to uh, understand what they were saying and what they were about. There was some weird cats, you know. That was the thing I'd always like to know about is uh, the place called the Ice Box. It was a place all the cats on the street had named the Ice Box, because that's where all the cold blooded dudes were hanging out. <laughs> Some guy went by Emanuel Hospital, man. And some of the most dangerous suckers on earth would come through that, man. Some dangerous cats hung out in that joint. We didn't think it was dangerous at the time, because we didn't have with them, you know what I'm saying? But after you realize, man, it's pretty scary cats on the street, you know. They didn't hurt us. They didn't like us drinking, doing drugs, like they do now. No, that was the other thing. With all the characters that were in the pool hall, yeah. there, were a, there were a lot of uh, drug addicts. Yeah. And um, some suppliers and um, but the rule was and they didn't uh, in fact you'd be surprised that a lot of those so-called characters were very encouraging and supportive of, of us youngsters uh, whether we were in high school coming out of high school going to college uh, of, of trying to be successful in our adult life and they would hold themselves up as a negative role model they say you don't want to be like this you don't want to you don't want to live like I have to live and go out and make something out of yourself yeah, man, so well. Slaughter um, again influenced me uh, with my own choices of jazz uh, to the extent that um, in the early 1950s I had a I wrote a record review column for the Portland Challenger newspaper and uh, I called it Slaughter on Williams Avenue and it's interesting that Bob Dietschy, the uh, author of the... Bob it is. No, he did, he, his uh, wife was ill, he couldn't make it tonight, but he's the author of Jumptown, The History of Jazz in Portland, 1947-1952. Uh, had a chapter devoted to Ed Slaughter, and he uh, he took the name of my my review column from the 1950s and called the chapter Slaughter on Williams Avenue, and talked about the impact that this man had. It, I think he would be proud right now if he knew that the impact that he had is heard on KMHD every Monday. When I'm on. Woo! It's coming on at that time. Yeah. Myself. We were the, in the underbelly of what was going on. You know, we hung out with the low lifers in a way sometimes. Both sides, you know. And we used to make some wine called Soul Juice. <laughs>
but what it is, it's a drink that the old blacks back up in the up above the farm didn't make this stuff called chalk. Horrible looking stuff, man. And you couldn't hit the ground with your head. Two drinks of that, and you missed the ground every time. <laughs> We can make 35 gallons of that stuff. And boy, everybody be out there crying. <laughs> Those are the fun nights. Because I had a place in my backyard almost this size where all the musicians come and cut their teeth. Oh, yeah, by the way, Mel Brown. Yeah. Mel Brown came to the joint. Huh? The guy brought him up to my place. He was about 16. He said, I got this kid you want to hear. Hey, okay, come on in here. Wow! He just tore the building down. And about uh, six months after that, the big band, uh, Walk the Bridges, big band was at the rehearsal in the backyard. And the drummer got tired, so he went out and take a break. I said, Why don't you let this kid sit in? Take a little quarter, say, man, let this kid play. Boy, Mel Brown sit down to the drums, hats and shoes are springing out of that drum. <laughs> The band completely out. I'll never forget that man. How he was. And drummer Bobby Ross lost that yeah. lost his job right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but skeet after boot. Hundred dollar boot. Hundred dollar boot had to have a hundred dollars in his pocket every day. See, he said, man, somebody might come through here and buy Williams. I ain't got a hundred dollars. I might have to run. You know. So he kept a hundred dollars in his pocket. Damn it. Jim, all these cats. Were, Watch out, Diamond Jim. Last time I heard, he was about 99 years old and he was yeah. still living, so but he pretty. might show up. <laughs> right, man. I won't talk too much. Yeah. But those are the days, man, when music was music. What about Kudo Joints when you go and hang out? What started me in music, what made me want to sing was Look at the Kettle, Sonny Thompson with uh, J. McNeely. This guy would be singing, man. <laughs> And he was just up on top of the hill while well, he's singing this stuff. So then, who is this dude, man? Look at that. He walked down with you about nine girls all screaming. <laughs> so that's what I want to be. <laughs> that's for me right there. You know? That's how I got into music, man. You know? Williams Avenue was really the, the hub of, uh, of jazz in, in Portland, and, and because you could you could step outside the door from the uh, Slaughter's Pool Hall, yeah, okay. and you could hear music coming out of other other clubs, uh, restaurants. Every everything had a jukebox. And you could smell the ribs, yeah. and you could hear the music yeah. <laughs> from a wide wide area. Another yeah. thing too was yeah. that when the bands would come to town like Big J McNeely, they would have a parade and they'd get a convertible car to the top down and they'd parade up and down Williams Avenue announcing their, their presence and the, and the gig for the night, and usually at the uh, Fraternal Hall, which was a whole other story. But anyway. That was Williams and uh, Williams and Broadway. That was about two blocks from Ed Slaughter's place. That was a dog that hung down there with the pimps and the players and the gangsters. And they called him Jack. The dog was named Jack. And this sucker would run up to that safe we were on the corner of uh, what is that? Broadway? Broadway and Williams. Yeah. And this dog would go in there and pick, go down and run in the store and get him a can of dollar food and take off, man. Go back down there with the pimps. And they would open it up for him. And I always wondered how in the hell that dog knew that it was a can. He just run down there, go to the pimps, open it up for him. It was Jack the dog. Jack the dog, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So get me out of Mississippi, Brussels. They had a dog, he'd go to his house. He'd jump up on your lap if you smoke it. I would get throw some stuff in the paper sack and put it on his head. He'd lay there while he put it on his head. And he'd get loaded. He'd go in there and lay down and listen to the top of the bottle. And he'd go in there smoking a candle and blow that smoke in his face. <laughs> Some of the stuff that happened on the street, though. They 
Woo! Baby James, at the beginning of the show, I promised you guys would talk about some of these nicknames. I mean, you, you were telling me no one, you guys didn't know the actual names of no. any, anyone. It was, everyone just had a nickname. You don't do that. And they had some good ones. Okay. <laughs> So, so tell us about the guy called the Monkey Whooper. The Monkey Whooper. They had a carnival that came to Portland. And they had a little chimpanzee. He said, anybody stay in the rain with this chimp, this monkey, you're going to give you five dollars. This dude jumped in the rain with an almost killed the damn monkey, you know what I'm saying? Five dollars, he had to go pull him off of the monkey. And ever since then, they called him the Monkey Whooper. Who was the Swami? The Swami. Franklin, you remember the Swami? His brother that came to town with a big turban, he had his gown and shit. The only thing he was saying, Lucky, Lucky, Bendy. <laughs> and everybody would go for it. Until they found out he was from Mississippi or something. <laughs> What the hell out of here, man? <laughs> yeah, the Swami. Yeah. yeah, a lot of these names I never heard of. Who's the Mighty Earthquake? Oh, yeah, the Mighty Earthquake was a... That's when Proctor and about five of us had a little game, like, you know, we walking down Williams. So we see this big dude coming down the street. So we're some pretty tough little dude. I said, who is this punk? What are you doing on the same side of the street that we are? And he weighed about 350. We're a big dude. He's a little punk. So the guy said, hit him, James. I slapped him. I didn't know he was the mighty earthquake or wrestler that came to town. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me so hard, I went back across the street, backwards, and my ego hung up in the skirt, and the head hit the sidewalk, out. So I looked at my buddies. Where's your friends at? Who might have been friends up in there? That was it for no. Remember Tom Jones? It for no. Skeet out the poop. Skeet out the poop, the drummer. Lightning, lightning. It was a nickname, Skeet Out the Boot. So Lightning and Skeet Out the Boot were the same. Yeah. Well, let's see, we've talked about Diamond Jim. Is that the real... The Diamond Jim, you know, with all the diamonds. Diamond and the Yeah. He was an entrepreneur. <laughs> Shifted from gambling and ladies to, to real estate as yeah, they got older. <laughs> and truth, he did. I love the players, man. I came up with my cats, man. They were sweet. We'll get back to the music right now. I'd like to thank Dick. Yeah. 
I want to take just a moment uh, for uh, some thank you remarks. My friends are here. I want to thank the Lewis Payne, his wife Tracy, who yeah. put their heart into this event and really made it happen. You know, it's really, it, what's really cool about it is people said nice things about me and I'm still alive. And, and I, I really like to have it this way rather than the alternative, you know, because everybody gets all sentimental and when, when you're gone. But uh, this was very nice. I appreciate the uh, folks being here. Uh, appreciate the good music and the thought and the heart and soul that went in, into this event. Again, and thanks for coming out because uh, it meant a lot to me. And I hope you've enjoyed the music. And uh, Sweet Baby is in my rap. Good night.